This year, the City of Edmonton will be updating its environmental strategic plan to become the way we green. Over the course of this exciting project, we're going to gain a deeper understanding into what it means for Edmonton to be an environmentally sustainable city. We will delve into environmental issues that are most critical to our long-term well-being, and we'll develop strategies that will help Edmonton endure for many centuries to come. What will it take for us to be a sustainable city? Are we there yet? Do we have a ways to go? There are many competing ideas on this question, and over the coming months, we're going to be taking time to listen to some of the world's leading thinkers on the subject. With us today is Richard Heinberg. Mr. Heinberg is Senior Fellow of the Fellow in Residence of the Post Carbon Institute in Santa Rosa, California. He's widely regarded as one of the world's foremost peak oil educators and has authored nine books, including Blackout, Peak Everything, The Oil Depletion Protocol, Power Down, and The Party's Over. His presentation today is titled After Fossil Fuels, The Great Transition Ahead. What we'll do is have uh, Mr. Heinberg make a presentation, and then at the end, we'll have some time for questions and answers. So please join me in welcoming Richard Heinberg. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm very happy to have had this invitation to come and speak to you in this august uh, chamber. Um, I will probably have some fairly challenging things to say and perhaps even at some points uh, scary, but please stay with me. This is our future that we're talking about and we, I, I think it, we owe it to ourselves to be uh, honest with ourselves and each other about the kinds of uh, challenges we, we actually do face. Uh, the word sustainability has already been mentioned and I think that's a good place to start because I think a, a lot of us use the word sustainable or sustainability without necessarily having, giving much, having given much thought to what it, it really means. I spent a couple of years in research on the history of the word sustainability, found that it, it, its first use goes back to the 18th century when it was referring to sustainable yield forestry, which actually is a very important concept in the use of renewable resources, the idea that we use renewable resources at no faster rate than they naturally regenerate. As we'll see, that's, that's an important element of a definition of sustainability, but it's not an adequate definition. I eventually arrived at five basic axioms of uh, uh, sustainability as a basis for a definition. There certainly have been uh, other definitions, and I, I tried to include as much as possible the essence of the best existing definitions in these axioms. I wanted to start with an axiom that simply focused our attention on why this is such an important word. When we say that something is not sustainable, we don't mean merely that it's a practice that's less environmentally harmful than some other practice that we're comparing it to. We mean that it's a practice that can be continued indefinitely, at least for many decades or centuries. Uh, and, and we know that many human societies have failed on that score. In fact, uh, there have been about 25 civilizations in all of human history, probably 15,000 uh, cultures, human cultures, but only a few of those have uh, built cities and become complex societies that we would identify as civilizations. Interestingly enough, most of those civilizations failed as a result of ignoring the rest of the axioms that we're going to be looking at. Axiom two, growth in population and or rates of consumption of resources cannot be sustained. Now that's a tough one. Uh, I don't think any politician or, um, or businessman would really like to contemplate the implications of this axiom, but I believe it is literally true. Uh, think of what's happening in China right now, for example. China's experiencing 10% annual rates of growth, and we sort of take that for granted, and we, we say, tut, tut, isn't that amazing? But what are the implications of that? At 10% annual growth, the entire size of the Chinese economy is doubling every seven years. So how big will it be in 14 years? Four times as big. In uh, 21 years, eight times as large. Now, is China's economy actually going to be eight times as large 
in, in 21 years as it is today, it's very unlikely, simply because it's more likely that the country will start running short on critical resources uh, before that, that's achieved. So just an understanding of arithmetic growth, whether it's in population or resource consumption, leads to the inevitable conclusion that growth cannot be sustained for long periods of time. Over short periods, yes, but it cannot be sustained over long periods of time. So growth in and of itself is a questionable goal for human societies. Axiom three, renewable resources must be consumed at a rate less than or equal to that of natural replenishment. Now that, of course, is the this essential idea of sustainability that goes all the way back to the 18th century, and it's still just as valid, and we're still ignoring it on many, many fronts, as, for example, with uh, overfishing of the, the world's oceans, with deforestation, with the loss of topsoil due to uh, erosion. Axiom four, consumption of non-renewable -re resources must decline. There's no sustainable rate of consumption of non-renewable resources, almost by definition. But if the rate at which we're consuming non-renewable resources is at least declining at a rate greater than or equal to the rate of depletion, then we're on the path towards sustainability. Now, what do we mean by this? If, let's say, we're using 5% of the world's petroleum resources on an annual basis. Every year we're using 5% of what's left. Then if we re are reducing our consumption of petroleum at 5% per year, then we're on the path towards sustainability. And by the time petroleum is really depleted, we won't really be all that dependent on it anymore and, and we won't have to suffer from uh, having gone cold turkey. So this is a kind of depletion protocol that could be applied to any and all non-renewable resources and would have to be in order for us to claim to be sustainable with regard to our use of them. Axiom five, this is the last one, wastes introduced into the environment from human activities must be minimized and rendered harmless to biosphere functions. Uh, clearly, we're not abiding by Axiom 5 right now with regard, again, to fossil fuels, interestingly enough, uh, because as we're burning them, we're venting the uh, combustion products into the atmosphere, primarily carbon dioxide, and changing the climate in the process. That's only one of the many ways that we're, we're polluting uh, air, water, soil, and so on. So we're a long way from being sustainable with regard to Axiom 5 or actually uh, any of the, of the previous uh, three axioms. The, the axioms 2 through 5 really define what makes a society sustainable. And right now our report card is not so good with regard to any of them. And I, I would submit to you that this is not a problem that will impact future generations two, three, four generations from now. This is a problem that we will be dealing with in our lifetimes, even if you are, as I am, uh, a baby boomer in your 50s or 60s uh, or older, you will experience impacts within your lifetime of our failure to follow these simple axioms.